affects the temperature a lot, as you can see. So these two cases should be analyzed separately. And depending on the type of the concrete on the pavement, you should do separate type of analysis. And all of the time unit? Time unit is in hours. Hours. Yes. And this peak you can see because of the hydration, which I was saying, because of the hydration, there is heat release and it affects the temperature, but it's due to time it is coming from the same phase. And this is another part of analysis, which is this is the heat generation. This is, uh, if you know that about uh, thermodynamics, uh, about the, the conductivity, even the specificity of the material is changing. In terms of this, the concrete is quite interesting material, which is in early age, all the parameters, mechanical and thermal parameters, are changing. And here you can see the plan view of different, uh, this is for indoor pavement, you can see the te temperature variation from day one to day 20, 28. Mm -hmm. And if you look from the, if, this is the thickness. You look from surface to depth. You can see that in the first day, there is a non-linear the temperature change, change. And here at the end, at the 28 days, you can see that the temperature is in equivalence. So this is the bottom temp temperature of the ground, and this might be the temperature of the room, for example. Then we use the, this uh, results to do the humidity analysis, and here you can see there is uh, the relative humidity change during the first 28 days. In the surface, it is closing maybe 12% of the water of the humidity, and the bottom it is just difference just two three percent. And this is the diffusivity coefficient, which is describing the velocity of the water movement in the concrete. As you can see, these parameters, depending on the humidity, depending on time of the addition during, this parameter is also changing. So it was quite obvious to incorporate all this change in just one model. And <coughs> here you can see another example of the humidity analysis. And you can see that even after 28 days, the bottom of the concrete slab is almost, there is no change in the humidity. So the humidity change is very, very slow process. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you showed the graphs uh, of the hydration mm -hmm. that it uh, starts uh, from zero and then it goes up after the mm -hmm. So this hydration, you start counting from the, uh, from, from the actually it's, it's going to be some mixture already. Yes. The concre concrete is a mixture of water and water. Oh, and 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 aggregate. And aggregate. Exactly. Okay. So it already has uh, in the volume the water. Yes. So then you pour additional water on it, and that is no, what no, you no. are talking about. The no, you don't. No, when you do the mix, you consider that the humidity in this moment is one hundred percent in all the thickness yes. of the concrete. Yes, because you just put the mixed concrete in a place, and it is starting okay. to diffuse. But the hydration starts from the top. No, hydration starts everywhere, but the losing of the water is. Uh, that's just the fractions. The, 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 the graph that you should have. Yeah, no, no, this the, 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 the back, 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 back. One more time. Yeah, again. Back? Yeah, again, back, back. Yeah, here, yeah. this one. Yeah. This one, it, it, this is just the fraction of the water and other components inside. No, this is not fraction, this is just to show the, how the process is made. The fraction yeah. might be very different. Yeah. So this is just how the unhydrated cement is becoming to the hydrated. Yeah. And what are the types? As you can see, that during, uh, it brings up having two types of water in concrete. There is a chemical bond and free water, which is contained in the pore structures, that is here, in the here of gas pores. And there is a chemical bond, which is here already in the product, which is not able to diffuse. So what we are talking about of diffusion is about these two types of water. <coughs> so these are not the thickness. No, no, no. This is just uh, to the show the yeah. no. But here you can see that in the surface, again, after 20 days, there is almost 15% of difference, but in the bottom, it's just 2%. So you might wait years or. Maybe one hundred years if you're not 
Which is about this moisture content, yes? I mm -hmm. think what is the thickness of the slab, tested slab? It's 25 centimeters more. 25 centimeters. Yes. And uh, by yeah. which method uh, did you check the humidity? And what what was what was the temperature and uh, humidity of uh, you internal mean. internal? Okay. Yes. Yeah, here, yeah, you are correct to correct to mention this factor. The environment was uh, it was exposed to 20 degree or uh, by Celsius. Of, as an indoor cabin without change any environmental temperature, but the humidity of 70 percent. Of so it's a laboratory. I mean, laboratory. yes, this is just for humidity. We keep the value stand uh, constant mm -hmm. as a 70 percent, and we just this is actually a result from uh, analysis from software, not from laboratory. Well, yeah, okay. But also we by using this, uh, <coughs> we evaluated our model with a lot of examples from laboratory or from other research papers. So this is to demonstrate how the model works. And uh, if uh, in this case, yes, I mean, uh, do, uh, do you um, mention that you have any cooling agent or uh, have you closed your surface uh, uh, software mm -hmm. or no? Yeah. Here in this case, if I'm not mistaken, because I've done a lot of uh, different analysis, it was uh, considered three days of perfect cooling. Mm -hmm. So the diffusion is starting after two. So if it is, what what do you mean the perfect curing? There is no moisture transfer with the ambient. Sorry, there is no moisture transfer with the ambient. Okay, but if it is cure a perfect curing gas, why do we have moisture difference? No, I, uh, I'm telling you three days of perfect curing. After three days, ah, okay, there is yeah. a okay. Under water. I mean, yeah. So then, after doing the thermal humidity analysis, we couple of both of them, normalize with the equations and everything, with the results, and then we go forward to the mechanical analysis. And here, this is also an example of we <coughs> looked at the joint. Uh, uh, here we consider fully elastic material, so there is no cracking to see the, how the behavior of the material would be. And here you can see some examples of the stresses. This is mentioned the principal stresses that are the highest tensile stresses appearing in the in this part. You can see mentioned these by the node numbers. Well, here I'm not sure if you can see here perfectly, but this is nonlinear water, and here you could see some cracking, and this is the joint that it is perfectly cracked, but it's not seen very good. There should be like red and blue dots. <coughs> so, so now we can we come to our point of when is the optimal time of doing the cell codes. So if you to remind you what is the cell code is this the putting in the longitudinal or transversal direction <coughs> to reduce uh, to avoid undesirable cracks. So when you cut do the cut in here, let's say, you force the concrete to crack in the place where you made the cut. So maybe you will cut one point of the head and you will leave it if you cut. So the, there is a window when you should do this cell cutting. If you do it very early, they might be relevant or you can image the structure or if you do it delayed, the cracking may appear and you might not be able to control it. So by time, <coughs> when the in some intervals, when the concrete is changing, there is in some interval you should do this. So I think it normally it might be from several hours to maybe a couple of days, depending. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, here uh, some engineers also do it just by looking and by feeling if it is the time to cut. They don't to they several don't hours. measure the time. Mm -hmm. Several hours. No several days. Days. Yeah. So if the accuracy, you know, can wait a couple of days. Depending well, on the so screen. card window is in, uh, in uh, initial and final set uh, during this time, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, during initial and final set, set you have only a few hours. Nowadays. It, it, it's standardization uh, mm -hmm. values, yes? In different countries, it's a different values of standard. But it's, uh, we'll speak about hours, the sewing. Well, I'm not sure about what you are uh, 
uh, what you are uh, telling about the sewing, because uh, we didn't haven't done uh, for this any laboratory test, but what we have learned about from the literature, it might be, because my knowledge about star coating is not maybe good. maybe uh, you speak about longitudinal joints, but uh, transversal mm -hmm. joints must be cut it in several hours. So here you can see that uh, this is the same case. Uh, well, these are the different cases when you do the cooling for four days or one day, and you can see these two are the stresses uh, are the stresses appearing in the first two graphs, and these lines, uh, these graphs will show the strength in this part in this line. So if they are crossing, it means in this part there will be the concrete will crack. So what does it mean? If depending on different parameters, you can see in every graph the parameters are different. Do you have different type of uh, let's say last point of the stock so cutting? If you do after is on this time, it will be too late to cut. And taking into account to these times, uh, we might have some graphs which are showing the uh, this. Uh, End of the saw cutting time, depending on the different parameters, there will be shrinkage coefficient, there will be curing time. If the curing is perfect, or this will be the relative humidity of the ambient. And another part is which we are going to put is duration of function. So, from the joint spacing distance, which we are doing right now, we have some result already, but we should somehow validate and put in the table, in the convention of the work. And uh, with this, we'll finish. This part of the test. I think if we have time, we will continue also with the uh, long, lifelong behavior of the concrete elements, where we will discuss the excel loads and other parameters. But here, until now, will be until this part. And as a conclusion, we can say that the flexibility of the model will allow us to analyze the structure and edge for thermal, humidity, or mechanical behavior. Also, it is available applicable for not only concrete pavements but also some other massive concrete structures for ordinary concrete structures such as bricks with even analysis of